Ah, Defender Gear. The one thing that will take a Monster Hunter veteran and reduce them to a puddle of copium. We had the first wave of this in Monster Hunter World where people could ride through low rank and high rank wielding powerful weapons that not only had higher raw, but also had the potent blast status to help you blow through the content of the game, whether you were a new player or somebody going through a second playthrough of the game, maybe with a buddy or your daughter. Looking at you, Gaijin. Now, I'm not really trying to get you to jump on either side of the fence on this one, more so just putting out there how people feel, why they feel that way, and hopefully giving either side a better understanding of each other's perspective. It's just one of the many issues that people are split on in the community. You know, because we're free to think whatever we want. No, the community hasn't gotten toxic. Chances are if you're using that word to describe the Monster Hunter community, you don't really know what toxic means or you're thoroughly diluting its definition. So I'll be using some tweets from Twitter and YouTube comments to highlight some of the different perspectives, but I by no means want to give off the impression that Twitter itself or YouTube are directly representative of the community at large. I'll present each side, give you my thoughts, and then feel free to flame me in the comments. Right off the bat, I want to say that I truly don't believe people that are anti-Defender Gear are coming from a place of malice. Hell, there's even people that say Defender Gear has a place, but it just needs to be put into better context of how impactful it may be on the player's experience. I think they honestly want new players to experience the entirety of what the game has to offer. I think they're worried about a number of things. They're worried if someone uses Defender Gear that they'll be able to get away with a compound of mistakes that they might not have been able to get away with if they weren't using the Defender Gear and weaponry. I can absolutely see where people are coming from in this sense, especially with the armor. The Black Belt set has a much higher defense which will obviously lead to attacks doing greatly reduced damage, making mistakes less punishing, and taking away from that Monster Hunter learning curve. To build off of that, the armor set also includes Recovery Up, which increases the amount of health you can recover after taking those attacks. And to top it off, there's built-in earplugs that will actually nullify a monster's roar, which is pretty much a core component of taking on a monster. Having those beefed up weapons will definitely have a big effect on clear time, and this will obviously be a bit skewed due to the defender's weapons being more powerful. Those strikes on bad hit zones won't be as bad when you have a longsword on steroids, and the precise strikes will be even more powerful than they should be. As Monster Hunter fans, we love the struggle. Honestly, if we didn't, we probably wouldn't continue to play the games and you honestly wouldn't be watching this video. But this is what I believe people taking this position want others to experience. The joy that we all take in the trial and error, the don't give up, get good mentality that we had to cultivate as Monster Hunter players. It's that rocky montage of you coming up against your first Anjanath and having it be your first wall that you have to work so hard to get over. It's that moment that you're hunting a low threat Kuro Peko, and that little shit calls in a whole ass devil joke. Some people see it as a slippery slope to more handholding in a game that was always known for its lack of handholding. Not in a Dark Souls sense exactly, but in a find your own path, perseverance kind of way. Part two of the reasoning is that crafting new gear, gear progression, is a huge part of Monster Hunter and what keeps us coming back. Again, I honestly believe that when people bring this up, it's because they don't want new players to, in a sense, cheat themselves out of the Monster Hunter experience. I can for sure understand this. That same example that I used when it came to Anjanath, that was still in low rank. For me, this experience was exactly what solidified Monster Hunter as a series that fit right at home. There's also a fear from these same people that people are going to rush through a game that doesn't even have its master rank expansion, leading to people complaining about a lack of content. Regardless of the reasoning, I think the disconnect, per usual, comes with the delivery of the commentary. The execution comes off as gatekeeping when in reality, they want people to be able to experience the game in its entirety even as early as low rank. Of course there are elitists, gatekeepers, and assholes, but I truly believe that a majority of the people that are anti-defender gear have good intentions even if they can't exactly articulate it every single time. Now, on the opposite side of the fence, you have the hunters who believe the defender gear and weapons can be a great asset for new players. 
This tweet from Gaijin is going to be used for a couple of things, but first and specifically, the fact that he said not having to deal with quickly discarded armor you craft was a godsend for Yuna. This is something that most people that are pro defender gear will use as a reasoning. Let's be honest, Monster Hunter is not a game that will automatically click right away. While I agree that it's gotten easier in some ways, I still wouldn't call it a cakewalk. Remember our friend Zeus? Think of how different that timeline could have been if he had the defender gear and weapons to get beyond the impenetrable wall that is Kezu and he got to continue his rise journey. Maybe he would be part of the community today and wouldn't have lashed out in frustration. How do I turn this off? Sleep mode? Sure. Garbage game. Garbage game. If you like that game, you like bad games. Just admit it. Jokes aside, that very well could have been the case. I know that I had that very experience with my brother. Not because he rage quit, but because the crafting system and such seemed a bit exhaustive at first. Like this person here, they acknowledged that the defender gear may have hurt their skill growth, but it helped to keep them interested and invested rather than quitting. I'm of the mindset of the person who responded to the very same tweet when they say it didn't really hinder them that much and regardless of defender gear usage or not, it's still going to take the person a long time to truly find that groove and master their hunting skills. Another side of the pro defender gear take is the fact that defender gear is perfect for people that may be progressing through the game for a second time, maybe with a friend. Jumping back to Gaijin's tweet, he talks about how he himself used the defender gear while progressing with Yuna. This is one of those cases where the perspective may be that the true Monster Hunter experience is the center of the Tootsie Pop. Do you absolutely need to put in an extensive effort on the outer shell to enjoy the entire thing? You may be a veteran player coming from the Switch platform and playing on PC, so you throw on the defender gear to cut down the grind and get you back to where you were. It comes down to the same thing I said with people that were anti-defender gear. I fully believe that pro-defender gear people absolutely want people to love Monster Hunter and they don't have malicious intent when they're accusing people of elitism or gatekeeping. I definitely think those words are thrown out a little too fast and before the other person's perspective is actually understood. When it comes down to it, they just want people to be free to experience and enjoy a game in the way they want to and they don't feel like it will impact other people's experience. They don't want anyone to be forced or pigeonholed into playing a specific way or be shamed into doing so. Yeah, you'll definitely see people throwing out crybaby gifts, terms like elitist, but when it comes down to it, they just want to preserve a community that has always been welcoming even if it might not come off that way at first. All right, let me be honest, my overall thought on using defender gear and weapons is pretty much meh. I truly do not care if someone uses defender gear in the grand scheme of things. I absolutely see both sides of this argument. On the side of the anti-defender gear crew though, I feel like the weight or impact of using those defender weapons and armor is being blown out of proportion a bit. If a new player were to ask me if they should use defender gear, I would definitely say no, because I think they'll be missing out on that opportunity for some early redemption arcs and they won't be able to soak in the content as much. But if they told me they were still going to use it, I'd just say, sounds good, enjoy, because I don't think it's going to ruin the experience in its entirety. Yes, I spoke on enjoying my first wall in Anjanath, but do you think that even comes close to comparing to the first time I took out Fatalis? The first time I finally took out EX Bolt Reaver? Me finally getting that big crown in Gen Yu? What we also have to remember is that this is a drastically reduced defender gear from what we got in Iceborne. It specifically stated that the gear will get people to HR. The longsword itself caps out at a base of 150 raw, green sharpness, and a defense bonus of 30. I would be shocked if the armor itself goes beyond that level of viability. 
I know people are worried that people will be missing out on the core loop of Monster Hunter, and I agree, but it won't be to the extent that they're making it out to be. I believe someone quitting because of Defender Gear will be uncommon. I believe the opposite side of that coin will be a more common occurrence, that there will be more of a retention of new players because of it. Now, am I going to go out of my way to recommend Defender Gear? Absolutely not. But maybe I'm just a masochist deep down. Am I going to reject a person's Hunter card if they've used Defender Gear? Negative. It just doesn't have a big enough impact in my experience. I know I've seen people saying that there's going to be this influx of people that breeze through low rank and then they're going to hit high rank and bog down hub hunts. I highly disagree with this. If that does happen, it's going to be a very small percentage of people. Outside of that, that's something that you very well can experience already. What's worse than that is the person that immediately leaves a quest if a person happens to cart early on in a hunt. When it comes down to it, both sides of this argument want what's best for Monster Hunter and the community as a whole. Nobody wants to try and deny people access to the game or the ability to enjoy it. No one wants Monster Hunter to be a breeze and remove any and all difficulty. We all want Monster Hunter to succeed. We want new players to enjoy their time with the game, even if we don't always do the best job of articulating that. But that's gonna be it for the video. I wanted to get ahead of this and try to be a mediator, I guess. Regardless, the main point is that whether you're pro or anti-defender gear, Monster Hunter succeeding is the goal of both sides. The problem is that sometimes we're quick to shut the other side out completely without taking each other's reasoning into consideration. Catch me streaming Monster Hunter on Twitch and for the right price, I might even wear defender armor to fight Valstrax. Links to the Discord and Patreon are in the description, so feel free to join the party and discuss this topic even further. Subscribing and hitting the video with a like are great ways to support the channel for free if you're looking for ways to do so. Have a great night, happy hunting, and I will see you guys in the next video.